Hi, I'm Archana Khurana from the lab of Dr. Mitch Kronenberg in the Department of Developmental Immunology at La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology. Today, I'm going to show you how to prepare high five insect cells and infect them with baclovirus for the purpose of generating mouse CD1D tetramers. CD1D tetramers are used by our lab and by other for the recognition of NKT cells. Baclovirus systems are used widely to produce recombinant proteins including MHC class 2 tetramers. So the procedure you will be shown has much wider applicability. This procedure involves initiating and growing up high five insect cells, infect the cells with baclovirus carrying CD1D, cDNA, harvest supernatant by centrifugation after four days of infection. Dialysis at concentration of protein in 150 millimolar sodium phosphate buffer, pH 7.4. Purification of mouse CD1D protein by nickel NTA agrose and ion exchange chromatography method. Concentration mouse CD1D protein to 1 mg per ml using YM30 concentrator. Vera enzymatic vitalization of mouse CD1D by AVDT protocol, elimination of free biotin by S200 column, and finally production of alpha gelser CD1D tetramers. Though the whole procedure involves all these steps, but today we will only show you how to handle these cells and infect them with baclovirus for the purpose of generating mouse CD1D tetramers. Let's get started. First of all, I would like to show you how to thaw the TN5 insect cells. The high 5 cell line was originated from the ovarian cells of the cabbage looper insect. They are used in this protocol because they are growing serum-free medium adaptable to suspension culture and produce high levels of recombinant protein. Add 5 ml of insect express medium in 25 cm square tissue culture flask. Note that express 5 comes without glutamine, so we need to add 10 ml of 100x glutamine pen strip or glutamine alone into 1 liter of media. Now I'm going to take the frozen vial of high five insect cells, thaw this in 37 degrees Celsius water bath. Immediately add high five insect cells to the flask and incubate for 30 minutes in 27 degrees Celsius incubator. Then aspirate the medium to get rid of the medium with DMSO gently without disturbing the cells attached on the bottom of the flask. Now we need to add 5 ml of fresh medium into the flask. After thawing, we now need to expand the cells prior to infection with baclovirus. Monitor the cells every day. When flask is nearly 70% confluent, bring the cells in suspension by banging the flask on both sides. Transfer the cells to 175 cm square flask by adding 25 ml of insect express medium and 5 ml of cell culture. Split confluent flask 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 5 as needed. Do not let cells overgrow. Count the number of passages that you have split the cells. Do not go over passage number 30 because it may cause aging of cells resulting in cell lysis. Cells need to be split every other day if we split 1 is to 5. When you reach the desired volume at the concentration of 1 million cells per ml, infect the cells. I generally grow up to 2 liter which usually amount to 70 175 cm square flask and approximately 25 ml per flask. 
or four one liter Elmer flask and approximately 500 ml per flask. Growing cells up in Elmer flask is much faster. Add 100 ml of culture and 400 ml of Express 5 SFM medium and grow them in shaker at 125 RPM at 27 degree Celsius temperature until we reach 1 million per ml cells of desired volume. Before infecting the cells, I would like to show you how to titer the baclovirus and we will do it next. In order to titer the virus, plate 3000 to 5000 cells per well in a flat bottom 96 well plate in 200 microliter of ins insect express 5 SFM medium. Let the cells settle at 27 degree Celsius for at least 30 minutes. Make the serial dilutions of baclovirus stock. One should do 1 is to 10 dilution in one line of 96 well U bottom plate using 250 microliter per well. Dilutions are made in Express 5 SFM medium. Using a multi-channel pipette, transfer a fixed amount usually 20 microliter of different dilutions to the cells. Culture at 27 degree Celsius incubator for 7 days. To avoid the evaporation from the edge rows, wrap the edges of plate with parafilm. After 7 days, check the plate and determine which dilution of virus gives a 50% infection. Then use a formula to compute the titer which is expressed in PFU per ml. The formula is found in most baclovirus manuals. After titering the virus, add required amount of virus to infect the cells. For protein production, the multiplicity of infection should be between 5 to 10. For example, if the titer of mouse CD1 G baclovirus is 100 million plaque forming units per ml and we have 20 million cells per flask, we need to add 1 ml to 2 ml of baclovirus to infect the cells. The cells should be infected for 4 days. On day 4, after infection, the cell should be detached, floating, swollen, and forming sausage-like shape. Now it is time to recover the supernatant. Take the medium from infected flask, transfer to 250 ml blue cap falcon spinning bottles. They can be autoclaved and reused. Fill the bottles evenly and centrifuge the cells in Sorval GSA rotor at 2000 RPM, 20 minutes at 4 degree Celsius. Collect the supernatant and proceed for further purification. I have just shown you how to initiate, grow and infect the high file insect cells and Titer the baclovirus using these cells. The most important aspects of this procedure is how to maintain the cells and how to know the exact titer of the baclovirus. Once you have generated CD1 D tetramers, they can be used as a powerful tool for analysis of glycolipid reactive T cells. This procedure for handling and titering the baclovirus can be used for many other recombinant proteins as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.